today we are going to do organizing part one now what are we going to learn we will understand the concept of organizing as a structure as well as a process and the steps in organizing and also the importance now what is organizing you know you must have heard the library is very well organized or you've been told to organize your life or to organize your almira organizing is putting things properly everything should be there in its place so organizing has got two meanings one organizing as a process and the other organizing as a structure so organizing as a process means grouping of activities of an enterprise and then establishing reporting relationships amongst them now in an organization there may be 2000 workers reporting now how do you know who is going to work where so there has to be some criteria developed some structure to be made so that everybody knows what exactly he has to do and organizing as a structure means the framework dhancha the backbone of an organization and in which all the managerial activities are performed and we are going to study that in this video now let's do the steps in organizing there are four steps this is one of the smallest process we have division of work departmentalization assignment of duties and establishing reporting relationships now let's do them one by one the first is identification and division of work now let us say there are 2 2000 workers in a factory now these 2000 workers need to be put into some job or the other that is called division of work so some like look at the example here some have been put in production some have been put in finance some have been put in sales so the first step is division of work divide the people in the organization into various categories and they should be put in small categories manageable cat categories then comes departmentalization now let us say there were 2000 workers who were put in various categories division of work took place now there were 1200 workers in in production department only in one department there are 1200 workers now they cannot be put in the same section or same department so what has been done again i have used the example that they have been divided into production department number 1 production department number 2 production department number 3 so they are divided into different departments that is called departmentalization so that they can be managed now 1200 workers under one roof cannot be managed so put them in small departments of say 50 workers or 60 workers each doing the same type of job so that they able to do the job well and departments could be either created according to territory like north south east west or according to product if the company is making large number of products then the departments could be created according to that then comes assignment of duties okay now in one production department production department number 1 there are 50 workers now who is going to do what work so you have to tell them the work to be done the worker will keep on waiting for the supervisor unless the supervisor comes and tells him okay now you go and start working on machine number 8 you go to machine number 5 now yesterday you were working on 5 now okay today you go and work on 4 so they, somebody has to tell them what work they have to do now while you are allocating the work to the subordinates you must see that the work should be according to their skill and competency only then they will be able to give the maximum so the third step in organizing is assignment of duties and then finally establishing reporting relationships now there are uh, 50 workers in that production department number 1 now who are they going to report to suppose something goes wrong there is load shedding or a workers met with an accident or somebody wants leave who do they talk to how do they know where to report to so there has to be a supervisor who supervises their work so if at all they need leave or any problem they have they'll report to him this is called establishing reporting relationship so this defines the hierarchy in an organization the organization structure gets its backbone through the hierarchy that runs through the various levels so these are the four steps in organizing and i have added some tips also of how to do it i have taken an example closer home yes now let us say there are 600 students in class 12th only in class 12th i am only taking one class that is class 12 there are 600 students okay now 
the first step is identification and division of work. These 600 students are divided into commerce, arts, and science. So let us say there are 300 in commerce, 150 in arts, and 150 in science. So total it comes to 600. The first step is divide them into different, according to the work, into different categories, disciplines, according to what they have chosen. Then comes departmentalization. Now there are 300 students who have taken commerce. They cannot be put in one section. So make sections. So we have made sections of 50 students each. So commerce has got six sections or departments. Arts has got three departments and science has got three departments. This is the second step called departmentalization. Then the third step is assignment of duties. Now the students are going to their class to attend the classes. Now they have basically five subjects. They could have six also, but minimum five subjects they have. Now who's going to teach? Which teacher is going to teach what? A teacher who can teach business studies, can also teach economics, can also teach accounts. So what is the teacher going to teach? Who is going to come and teach you what is called assignment of duties? So the teachers have been told that which subject have you to teach. Similarly, the student also might have opted for maths or physical education or computer or any other subject. So the student should also know, okay, I've taken computers, I'm going to study computers and not maths. Then establishing reporting relationship. Now each section has got one class teacher. So the child wants leave, they have to ask the class teacher. The parents want to meet, they have to have, ask, meet the class teacher. Parent teachers meeting is being held with the class teacher. So establishing reporting relationship. If some child wants to go home early, he immediately he has to contact his class teacher and she is the one who allows the child to go. So these are the four steps in organizing. I hope this is helping. Uh, clear the matter. Now come to the importance. So there are six importance of organizing. Let's start with the first one. Now I've tried to relate these importance with the steps that we've already done. So that if you remember the steps and automatically you will be able to recollect the importance also. First is the benefit of specialization. Now remember the first step in organizing was identification and division of work. When the work is divided, then one person is doing only one type of job. So when he keeps on doing that particular type of job, then he starts specializing in that. So that leads to benefits of specialization. So this is derived from the division of work. So when one person is doing only one job over and over again, you know, he can close his eyes and do the job. So that leads to specialization. So that is the foremost importance of organizing. Then the second is clarity in working relationship. Everybody knows what he has to do. See the example that I gave you of the school. Then if a child has taken commerce, he knows I have taken commerce. I have not taken science. And he knows I am in section A, not B. He will not go and sit in B. Because if he goes and sits in B, his attendance will not be marked. So after some time, he'll automatically understand that, no, I don't belong to this section. I belong to that section. So there is clarity in working relationship. Why? Because the it is very well established. Establishing reporting relationship. So everybody knows who they have to take the order from and where they have to report. So the work becomes very clear. So there is no confusion and therefore the work goes on smoothly. So this is yet another importance of organizing that the, there's clarity in working relationship. Everybody knows exactly what he has to do. So if a worker has to report to production department number one, he will go to production department number one. He will not go to production department number two. And the supervisor of production department number one will have his name. He will have the name of that worker with him and he'll say, okay, uh, you have reported, right? You go to that particular machine and start working there. So there's a lot of clarity in the working relationship. Everybody knows what work they have to do and therefore fixation of responsibility also becomes very easy. Then the third importance is optimum utilization of resources. Now when everybody knows what they have to do, there's specialization. They've already been doing that work over and over again for a long period of time. Then they will be utilizing the resources best. They already know how to work. So there will they'll be no wastage. And because the duties have been assigned, everyone knows what he has to do. If Mr. X has been assigned machine number five, he'll go and work on machine number five. He will not go and work on machine number four. He will go there only because he knows exactly what he has to do. So there's no overlapping of work. Every work has been divided amongst uh, people and there's no work that is left undone nor is there any duplication of work. Therefore this leads to optimum utilization of resources. Then adaption to change. Now when the worker has been doing that same work over and over again, 
same thing he's been doing you, he can close his eyes and do the work so now whenever change takes place is more than willing to change because now the work has started becoming a little boring for him so any change the worker is able to accommodate if the organization structure is conducive to that if the worker has become a specialist in whatever he's doing then whatever change has to be brought about he will accommodate for example earlier they, they used to be manual accounting now there's computerized accounting the environment also keeps on changing similarly the organization structure needs to be changed he'll be more than willing to do it so adaption to change becomes very easy and convenient if the organization of the org of the business is very well defined so organization structures defined then effective administration now the manager or the supervisor who is supervising the worker and the worker has been doing that work ever since he joined the organization he's become a specialist now the supervisor doesn't need to stand on his head now the supervisor can go about doing his other jobs because the worker knows what he has to do he has been given the target he knows what his duties are so he continues doing it because he's been doing it for a long time and what happens to the administrator then then the supervisor or the manager or the administrator he can do his other work so getting the work done becomes much easier and his efficiency increases he becomes a better administrator because now he can look into other matters he just doesn't have to stand on the head of the worker to see whether he's doing it or not because the worker has understood his work and this again this important has been derived from assignment of duties when the assign the duties have been assigned very clearly and the worker has been doing that for a long period of time then in that case the manager doesn't have to stand on his head and get the work done he can go about doing his other work and he can become a better administrator then development of personnel now what happens to that person now suppose a worker was told to make 10 units on a particular machine initially he could just about make 10 units but after some time when he gained experience and specialization he be, he started making those 10 units very quickly now then two hours before the time for him to go he is completing now he's got extra time left so what he can do is he can do some of the work for the boss he can learn other things so he can take over the work of his super, superior and therefore develop himself for that so delegation of work takes place uh, through this importance of organizing whereby the superior delegates some part of his job to his subordinate so this leads to the development of the subordinate the subordinate is not only doing his own work he's also doing a part of his boss work so as a result tomorrow if the boss has to go on leave or gets transferred then this subordinate is ready to take up his job so his own development also takes place all this is because a good organization has been made then expansion and growth now what happens when the subordinate also is able to do the job of the superior superior is doing the job the subordinate is also equally prepared to do the job this leads to expansion and growth for example there's a principal of a school and there's a vice principal now when the principal has to go for some meetings or some for some other work for cbsc work the vice principal officiates as the principal so very often she's officiating as a principal so she knows what the principal does she's working in the capacity of the principal also now suppose the school wants to open another branch then this vice principal who has already been officiating as a principal on a number of occasions then that vice principal can easily be made the principal of the new school because she knows the rules and regulations and she can easily become the principal of the new school so expansion and growth of that organization takes place if the employees they have learned the work and you have defined the organization structure very well so you can add more jobs you can increase the number of departments and also increase the line of products so that brings us to the case study so let's see what's asked here while doing so ramit has performed a step in the process of organizing identify the steps so we just have to identify and they're talking only about one step so let us see what it is z limited is a manufacturer of electronic goods on one hand it deals with items like books music instruments videotapes etc and on the other hand it deals in laptop and mobile phones to facilitate specialization ramit the ceo of the company decided to group books music instruments videotapes under media and laptop and mobile phones under consumer electronics while doing so ramit has performed a step in the process of organizing identify the steps so the step is quite evident because they're already saying that um, they're selling books 
music instrument video tape division of work was already there now what would be the step that they're talking about here think think about it for a moment yes i think you've got it right and the hints are he decided to grouping together creating departments and he's grouped them into media and consumer electronics so the step that they're talking about here is departmentalization and that's all in this video thank you